we are in the second part of a series that I'm doing called The Command of Community Living, or even called God's Command for Community Living. God's Command for Community Living. And I'd like for you to turn in your Bible to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 32. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. We're still going through the technical difficulties, but we're going to get through another side. You got, you got that push pass that said Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. All right, let's take a look at that. Now, I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation, the New Living Translation. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, the New Living Translation. Mr. Muhammad, we need the power for for this. Dr. Charles is not It's not here? Okay, thank you. Just didn't know that. Thank you. I got the information. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32 says this. And I'm reading from the New... Everybody have it? Yes. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. It says, Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has... Just as God through Christ has forgiven you. I'm going to read it one more time. New Living Translation. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as Christ... Just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Now, I want you to turn also to Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, and the 9th to the 11th verse. Sadiq, go ahead and get this ready. Sadiq, go ahead and get this ready. I'll figure out how to do it. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 through 11. 1 Thessalonians 5, chapter 5, 9 through 11. This is from the New International Reader's Version of what I'm reading from this time. The New International Reader's Version. It's going to be slightly different than yours, but bear with me. Uh, we'll make it happen. So in this version, it says this. Starting at verse 9. Are you right there? Yeah. First Thessalonians. Starting at verse 9, it says this. God didn't choose us to receive his anger. God didn't choose us to receive his anger. He chose us to receive salvation because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done. Jesus died for us. Some will be alive when he comes. Others will be dead. Either way, we will live together with him. So, cheer each other up with the hope you have. Build each other up. In fact, that's what you are doing. And the church say amen. Amen. We are in part two of a series entitled Commands for Community Living. In this series of sermons, we are exploring the question, how can people stay together for over 100 years? How can a church of people, how can people stay together for over 100 years? And how are we going to make it today? You may remember that the discussion evolved out of the discussion of four words that began with the letter C. Last week, this discussion evolved with four words that began with the letter C. The C words were communicate, community, commune, and communion. Today I want to add a fifth word, a fifth word. The fifth word is, and also a letter C word, that word is command. Repeat after me, command. command. Now command means this, to give someone an order, to tell someone to do something in a forceful and often official way. God commands us to be obedient to his word, his will, and his way. A command. A command. I, I get the word command from the word imperative. Anyone knows what an imperative? Anybody in here, an English scholar? You, you know English real well, you study English? There's something called an imperative. An imperative, uh, all the verbs that have to do with this series that I'm doing is this now, this one called One Another Series, this is One Another Series. And the series have to do, all of them have to do with commands for community living. The commands don't come from me. The, man, the commands come from God. And God commands us. The word command should be there. I get the word command from the word imperative. And all the verbs in this series of one another are imperative verbs. The imperative voice is this. It is a word that is not a suggestion. It's not a recommendation. It's not some nice thing that we want you to do. No, a command is, a, it is what it said. It's a command. It's an order. It's, it's from the imperative. It has to do with expressing a command, a statement. 
So if I say something like this, eat your spinach to my children, am I saying that I want them to just think about eating their spinach? No, I'm giving them a command. Eat your spinach. Gonna be like Papa. We're gonna be strong. We're gonna eat your spinach. So therefore, a command is that it is authoritative. Now, um, authoritative, we said that in that thing. That we held the word Bible said, the Bible is the word of God, it is the authoritative word of God. Remember we talked about that? Yes. That word authoritative is this. Authoritative having is having to having the confidence quality of someone who is respected or obeyed by other people. Authoritative. Who is the authority when we talk about the authoritative word? Who is the authority in that statement? God is the authority in that statement. So when we're talking about the word of God, he has the authority to say, I'm going to give you a command, and when I give you a command, I want you to do what I say I want you to do. Because he's almighty God. So he gives the authoritative word of God. In other words, when we say that we are, uh, in our weekly confession, authoritative word of God, we're talking about the word of God is inspired by God, who is to be respected and obeyed by all of humanity. Now, you have your five command words there. You should already have that. But what I want to do is this, because I've heard that my power is going to go out on this, I want to stop for a minute and think about one of these commands that God has asked us to do. One of the commands that we're going to deal with is the command to do good and to be kind. To do good and to be kind. You got it set up for me? Yeah. All right, he's almost there. Do good and be kind. Take a look at this, please. 